Welcome to an event hosted by an allocated space. We are a 501c3 nonprofit located in Sever, Maryland in, in the non-pandemic times. Uh, for now, a lot of our events are virtual. Um, we have a lot of events uh, going on every month. Uh, we try to have a happy hour every Thursday. Should people come out and chat, drink a tea, have a drink some soda, whatever it is they like to do. We have DC443, which is hack the box. Come hack things together every other Friday at 7 p.m. We have project night in person for any in-person, good old fashioned, um, want to do something together. We have uh, that every Monday night at 7 p.m. where you could do 3D printing, uh, wood shop, whatever. So a little bit about who we are. Uh, as I mentioned, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. All the donations and everything that we have is funded by the community. Um, things like soldering irons, those cups that we mentioned a little bit earlier, laser cutter, 3D printers, a billion of them, all those kinds of fun things. We're always looking for more volunteers to do things. Uh, so if you would like to participate, there is a way you can help. We take volunteers of all kinds. Uh, you can volunteer your time, mentor people, teach a class. You could share your knowledge through blogging or sharing the constructables uh, that you made at the space. You could donate in supplies, uh, good old soldering irons or just whatever's going around. Not trash though, please. And um, you can donate money probably about 50 members who donate every month to various levels to keep the space alive and funded. There's a couple of different ways to connect to us. Uh, we're on Twitter, we're on Meetup, we're heavily on Slack, Discord, and Facebook. That is my spiel. Over to our instructor, DigiRain. Hello, I'm DigiRain. I'm also known as Jose I am a security engineer over with Sinai. We are SMEs on demand. I do a lot of work in DevOps, Agile, and uh, security accreditation. Today, we're going to be going through our fourth soldering project. Because I started my tech career uh, pulling wires through spaces and uh, building and repairing circuits. So we're coming all the way back to here. Here we have the entire kit. I have broken it out. The instructions are not very good. These are the instructions. It just says weld everything. So what I did was I went through for all the components, laid them out by their um, description. For resistor R1, that's gonna be your brown, black, black, brown, brown. And for resistor R4 is your orange, orange, black, black, brown. My brown came out more of a sort of a brownish, um, maroonish thing. So the, the quality control on these uh, resistors was not so good. So after looking through this kit, I've heard some things about it. Things like the XR2206 is going to be a pain to get in and try to get it working right. We're like we have to make sure the notch is correct and making sure the dot is in the appropriate spot and also making sure we um, solder it and hope that we, that the chip we got is actually good. The chip is probably the most expensive piece of this entire kit. Um, so when trying to sort your components, these ones, it's all about the bands and I had to use my old man light to see the bands. The, band, the, the identification on these is on the inside silk screened and it should be Bravo 503 and Bravo 503 and Bravo 104. I had, oh, these ones were not so bad. I mean, this is your, your 100s and your 10s. So those aren't so bad. And I was able to identify those just by sight. These were fun because all of those are numbered. There is a very, very light brown, a light brown on yellow silk screen for the numbers 104, 105, 473, 222, 101. And you have to get those correct. And then the rest of the amount here are perfectly fine. So when we are, going to complete this we're going to have to we're going to have this come out where this will be the ground square wave sign and triangle wave 
me, I'm going to be plugging it into a Jensen speaker and eventually plug it in into last week's project, which was our uh, Tesla um, speaker. Here is the pieces. I may do this all the way through, but from what I was told, the this kit, the uh, the plastic on it, is very uh, tight fit. That you may have to, if it looks like you're going to force the 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 um, holder together, use the soldering iron at the spots where it's kind of rubbing, so you can pull it and move it. This is actually a quite simple kit. I mean, straightforward for you know what you're what you're going to be doing. The difficulty is going to be coming with getting this every single one of those pins in here soldered correctly and making sure none of them are touching making sure that we don't overload any of the any of these pieces making sure to on the instructions it says your polarity making sure the silk screen is correct making sure the polarity is correct and then once we're all done powering the thing for me i am powering using this this is a what I use, it's nine volts. It gets me exactly what I need for this kit. And this is what I use for my, my Arduino stuff. Um, so I can always plug in an Arduino in this and then I'm perfectly happy. So let's, let's go, let's talk about uh, some of the stuff we did in the past. Make sure your soldering iron's hot, making sure it's at the appropriate temperature for whatever your solder is. Here's my solder, I'm starting to run out. My solder is going to be 60 40 tin lead. I have my wicking material. I have my wet sponge. I will make sure to keep my hands free of my working uh, or from the soldering iron. Never touch a soldering iron. Always treat it as it's hot. And for me, for this kit, I will also have three wires that I had stripped earlier so that we can do the test at the end. I'm going to be moving this tray up and now we bring components down as we're using them. Safety glasses. Let's, da, 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 da. Let's move this over. Tray goes up. Okay. We have the first component. I'm just going to bring this in. So we have resistors two so resistor one's probably this one down here oh no there's resistor one right there let's take resistor one give it a light bend a light bend and away and away flip the resistor and now take a look at this board you're going to see now normally we would have the traces just come off to the side but you can see this actually these two holes you can see how on the silk screen some of these components are actually serving two purposes or on two paths so let's get this let's get this that's nice and hot And that was actually a nice and clear one right away. Boom. Oh, always work in a well-ventilated area. I just reminded me I just needed to turn my fan on. Resistor one done. So that is the first component. Next component is R2, the 503. So let's take the 503, set it here. Let's grab snips, remove the extra. Some question, what, what were the colors of R1 again? R1, and I even wrote this down, <laughs> was brown, black, black, brown, brown. Thank you. Now, brown may be, for me, it was actually closer to a purplish brown but it was still brown gotcha. and 
because the only two you're comparing it to is basically look at it. If you see one that is two bands, two bands, one band, and one is, oh, well, they're actually both the same like that. So basically, one of them should have two black in the center. Or no, they both have two black in the center. <laughs> I was looking at the ends, and when I looked at the ends, I'm like, okay, I could clearly see uh, brown and brown versus an orange and orange. And yes, if you see the two orange, the two oranges are clearly look orange. At least mine did. Mm -hmm. And then basically, I'm get, I'm hoping that the the one K is that is brown, black, black, brown, brown, and not violet. Because then that's going to ruin everything, but oh well. So now we're doing R2, which is this nice big one right here. There we go. This, we're a little lucky. It has these tabs. See if do I have a some needle nose here. I'm not going to go out there just for needle nose pliers. I can use my thumbs. There. Now I'll give it nice and snug, and then we have the three pins plus the big one or the big two. That'll help us hold some of that in. I like doing the center one first. I think I got that one pretty good. Let's see. Yes, I got that one pretty good. So what I did was I held the solder to the bottom of the pin at the base of it. And then I used my soldering iron at the top to hold at the top of the, the pin so that the pin itself would warm up. And then I just lightly dragged the iron down. And then that was, that made sure the pin was hot enough for the solder. Excellent. Actually, I don't like that last one. There's not, doesn't feel like there's enough solder there. Oh, okay, the solder was, oh no, it doesn't look like the solder's there, there we go. Now that's enough solder. And then nice big. There. These ones are the nice and easy ones. And and I mean with these resistors, it's these are the dump components. Yeah, good. Three clear solders. And as you can tell, and this last one, I got it right in. And you can see it's nice and in, but this first one, yeah, that the first one right in the middle, I got exactly all the solder I needed on there. This one was nice and clear. This one was just barely enough to make this connection, but it should be fine. The next is resistors three, five, and six. These are all going to be the same one. Mine all came in the same tape right here. So there's six. And of course, there's three and five. So now we're going to move my board to be like this. We'll do five, so six, what was six again? Other oh, six. Six is right in the center of the board. These two are off on the side. 
Move these legs this way. Let's give this a nice bend. There. We'll bend these away from each other. Okay. And I need my solder. And there we go, six quick welds. So Jelly, how do you, you keep it up? Yeah, I'm doing mine a little bit out of order here, but I'm, I'm following along with you. I'm curious, that, um, I might have done R2 wrong. Which one is R2? R2 should have been this big. big guy. This big, uh, it should have been your amplitude uh, resistor. Gotcha. I skipped on to the um, nonpolar caps. There's uh, the small yellow ones that are yellow and yellow. Oh, yeah, the horrible, horrible ones. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to be careful not to damage them as I apply solder. I feel like they're easily damaged. Yep, they are very easily damaged and horribly silk screened. Okay, now I'm on to my next resistor. This is resistor R4. R4 is up here. And the board is now starting to come together. R4. Now we are R7, which is our fine tune. And this will complete my first row up there. We'll take a small break to let everyone catch up after this. Because I, I what I did was I set up set the components up in a way. So I basically do a third, take a small break, third, take a small break, let people catch up if they need to. Go. Okay, so on so I'm on a pin. And I come down. There we go. On the pin. Pull away. Oh. 
perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good. All four of those are all three of those down there are independent peaks. Yep, nothing is touching. Those are perfectly good. And we will take a small break right here. Okay. Now we're going to do the course adjuster. Actually, I think I have something that will help, so I don't have to. Oh, yeah, much better than using my mail. Okay. Good. Center pin hot. Now comes some difficult components. Our 100 cap goes into C1, and the positive is the long feet. So cap C1. And you'll see there's a silk screen there and that matches the silk screen here. If I get this wrong, oh well, I just wasted a whole bunch of stuff. Is that what you did for C1? I think so. So I'm looking at, I got the, the only big capacitor here and I put the, uh -huh. uh, crap, the long legs through the non gradient hole because the silk screen on it sh should match the silk screen here. Yeah. I probably should have looked that up before I did this, but oh well. Because I, I wasn't sure, let's see. So it says here, okay. Yeah, yeah, that should be correct. Well, if not, oh well. Did C1, now C2. 
Yeah, the first one of the hard ones. Yeah, I wasted a whole bunch of solder. But... Because what I did was basically tin the wire and let it flow back down in. And that seemed to work pretty good. And now this pair, which will go into C3 and C4. I am matching the silk screen with the silk screen. Trying to get that as close without damaging the, uh, without pushing it so the legs go too far apart. Excellent. Wonderful. So I'm going to let I'm going to warm this wire up just a little bit more so it flows into the hole a little bit better. Now these caps, are you putting them right up against the board as far as they'll go, or are you trying to like stand them up a little bit? I'm trying to get them as close without uh, bending the legs too much. I mean, we have space. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, if I was doing this back in my professional career, it would have been get them as tight to the board as possible because grams of solder wire mm -hmm. add up. Oh. So you can see here, this one is nearly on the board itself, where this one's fair, a little bit off. Mm hmm but both of them are nice and snug. These are all nice and snug. Okay, C5. Oh, these are gonna be a pain. And this is gonna be a pain. Oh yeah. I'm going up this chain. Thank goodness they're not, uh, don't have polarity. Yeah, that'd be impossible. Might as well. No, I'm going to do these one at a time so that way I don't accidentally damage one. a little bit more on this side since well, actually I'm not because there's not enough give then so it's straight up the line okay good play it away I'm running out of solder out in this uh this tube I've had this tube for years on. There we go. Now this I'm gonna have to clean up some. That is way too close to the Okay, that's good.
Come on. Be nice. All the other ones played nice. Excellent. Okay, that stairwell was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Just because of how small they are and fragile, I'm kind of worried that I might have damaged something. I'm not sure. All good. And take the small break because that is another row. Ooh. Yeah, I use the uh, small breaks as a moment to get away. From, even though I do have a fan over there, I want to make sure I am not exposed to the fumes for extended yeah. periods of time. So I take a step away, drink some water. Okay. And make sure you should see two notches, a notch on the chip and a notch on the board and the notch on the board needs to match. And you should see a tiny, tiny notch. This one is going to be fun because I'm going to have to. Well... <sighs> yeah. It's just it's, this. Uh, this is the one I'm more afraid of of damaging. Yeah. There. I suppose they didn't just put a little bit of styrofoam over it to secure it during shipping. At least something. So this I didn't do the the tips exactly perf exactly how they should be. Like you shouldn't uh, put solder on your soldering iron and try to wipe off there. But I was just doing it just enough to hold it in place because now I can come in. you'll see not staying on one pin for very long because if you feel on the backside it's a very thin plastic so what I'll do is I tap I have the solder at the base touch the pin and then run down to it and then pull back up and that should it'll create these peaks Hopefully, okay, those peaks all look good. Oh, no. Oh, oh, it's not that bad. Ooh, I thought those two pins were touching. There. Wow. That actually wasn't that bad. You just have to go fast. Because <laughs> <sighs> what I did was I held the solder on the bottom and then Start at the top of the pin to warm the pin up, run the solder iron down the pin to touch the solder, and then pull it up. So that way you take your, the pin's already hot, you touch the solder, and then as you pull up, you're wicking it up, and then it's going to, now I'm going to go back in and make sure this all flows down. So warming up the pin just a little so that the solder flows back down. Okay, with 
those connections are solid. There. Nice solid connections. But this is probably easy, the, the part where we're easily going to mess up. Either melt your harness. Now I'm not even trying to clip the leads. I'm just trying to get rid of the extra solder just in case I have to come back in and redo these, these pins. You can see, yeah, those are, those are some tall peaks. How is you, did you do your uh, chip seat yet? Yep, my chip sheet, I, I did exactly what you did. I put a little solder on the tip, a little extra, use a kind of wicking motion to wick it up, and they all went on pretty easily. I had a couple go backs. They just didn't look great, but I had like maybe like four or five. Where I'm like, you know what? I need to go back and take it. I'll take another look at it. Not all of them. Okay. And we will not put the chip in until the end. Now time for our power. I think this is where I have to... Oh, wait. No, good. I don't even have to adjust. I was afraid I was going to have to move my... Oh, yes, I do have to move. Uh-oh. So, let's see. I think I have to go and flip to, like, this now. Actually, let's move to, like... This. Yep. Because this has to go like off to the side. Oh, good. It's kind of holding itself on. In. Run the pin. Like this pin. That pin is too close. Good. Actually, did uh, all three pins with this last one close, but not touching. Next to that capacitor. Let me take my screwdriver. Oh, might help if I pay attention to where I set my solder down. At least that wasn't my hand. Yeah, that's far enough apart. Okay. Time for the pins. Let's see if I can. Actually, yeah, I can do. I can do this for for until I have to switch over. I want those nice tall pins on this side. Then we do the cheat. Where? No, oh, no, no. Okay. 
this is going to be really bad because it doesn't want it wants to, doesn't want to really hold itself on. So what I did is I'm going to very gently get some solder in a one pin, holding it in place. There we go. Whew. And then we treat this like we did the IC. No. There we go. Good. I need a stronger fan. Like it's doing its job, but. When there's a lot of fumes, it uh, doesn't seem to keep up. Like I'm, I'm far enough away that it's not getting into my face, but I can tell it's getting in front of the camera. So I just have to make sure to take some time Come on. Well, oh, that is touching. No, it's not. Okay, how bad did I do here? Oh, only one, only I have to redo one. Nice. This one right here. Yeah, I'll redo this one while I'm at it. And it wouldn't hurt. Oh. There we go. Four really ugly blobs. And six okay blobs. That's what I got on the force too. My fours aren't pretty. They uh, they're not level. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna go clean it up because no one's gonna see that besides me anyway. Now, time to do the four. And I mean, it doesn't for this. It doesn't matter which side you you do it on but I'm, I'm going to line up so it lines up exactly with triangle and sign on the silk screen because I mean it's a two by two. Oh, making sure long pins are on the silk screen side okay there's my thumb Come on, thumb. There. Be a good thumb. Okay, fingers. There we go. I got this very intricate. holding my hands just so I can get that one in. Come in. Oh. oh, no. The solder came off the cap. Or the no. cap came off. There we go. Oh, that's a horrible blob. There. It's a less horrible blob. There, that's even a lesser horrible blob. There. Good.
go. Let's see. Huh. Yeah, I think that'll work. I mean, this is a very simple. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say this is a very simple one. This is going to be the one that just like snaps. Like everything breaks on this last three piece. I know the shadows are really bad on this, but I had to move in this way to. Go. Oh, that is nice and snug. And at least taking the tips off because I have run my back of my hand across those way too many times. And I don't need this anymore. Okay, so um, I have metal that I am now touching. I cleared myself. And I'm going to clear myself again, touching ground. That is aimed at the right location. Do not force it. It doesn't want to get a gentle nudge on the legs. And we're going to start off with, I think I'm, oh, fine. Now let's take a look at the silk screen. I'm not going to do the case yet because I want to make sure everything's working before I force it into this horrible, horrible case. Did you run into any other problems? Um, I'm being very ginger with this this chip here. Oh yeah, it's, it's my legs good. weren't uh, my legs were splayed out, so I had to very gently um, bend them inwards. Mine too, and I'm being very careful with it, and I got it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna just lay this on top. Oh. Lay this on top. We're going to go for the lowest tone, the 1 to 10 hertz, and we're going to go for a sine wave, because everyone knows what a sine wave sounds like. But that's what we're doing today is, <laughs> hey, wow, that would be an excellent uh, um, happy hour event. Guess the uh, frequency, and is it a square, triangle, or sine wave? Heck yeah. I have no idea. I honestly haven't listened to tones before. Knowingly, at least. Uh, see, I was a... Com communications major way back when. Actual communications... Uh wave propagation type stuff. So learning how a wave sounds. At least I'm like my buddies that went into Morse. Oh my goodness. Where they really do hear Morse code in just random noise. Of 
or maybe a name that tune with the, uh, you know, where you do the, the amount of time on uh, different modem and other frequencies. Yeah. Let's see who can uh, name it correctly with the least amount of time. Oof. Yeah, once I got that new power supply on that uh, Tesla coil, it works great now. And there's a lot of sticker on this uh, acrylic. And there's no instructions on the order you need to put it in. Mm -mm. I even looked at the picture on the the kit on Amazon, and that was only slightly helpful. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, did I bring the right screwdriver? Yes, I brought the right screwdriver. So I need ground. I'll use there's ground. I need more. Go. I thought I had a spool of thick core wire. I can't find it. Or solid core. Ah. That's snug. And let's go to the square. This up. Close. Nice and snug. up oh boy okay so the square is the middle one so let's grab a oh turn off the soldering iron so I don't burn myself uh, where's my speaker I have it here oh there it is Let's see if this is powerful enough to do this speaker. So let's move that. If not, I have uh, other things I can use. Okay, I can hear something, it's just very low. Let's see if that helps. Okay. I 
fact, I jump back down to here. Yep. Okay, it is working. Let's flip this over to triangle wave. Does it do anything here? So if it's in triangle, that means I need to flip this over to this. Yep, that's a triangle wave. And then what was this? Oh, that was the square wave. Oh yeah, okay, okay. so there, that would be triangle wave. Then this, we'll flip it over to sine. So the let's see if the, so the nine volt battery was supposed to be enough, but I'm not getting much power or sound out of that. So I'm gonna pull. I have a power supply. I'm gonna see if because it could be. I mean, this battery. I don't know how old it is, and I didn't test it before this because why would I test my equipment before doing any of this? Ooh, I can actually hear something. Boom, sine wave. Triangle. Nope, not enough power to power the, this by battery. Okay. But this does power the speaker. And that's what's important. I can hear I can hear at 18 volts half an amp. Okay, good. Yeah, I do hear power off that. So now Using these two, I'm going to grab two of my alligator clips. So the tone generator is on. Yeah, it is working slightly, just not to the wonderful experiment I wanted. But it's been a pleasure. Do um, you have any questions or concerns? I do not. Um, thank you for your time doing this tonight.